Um, I'm vehemently anti-cult when it comes to badgers. And the reason I am is because the scientific evidence which we've gathered at the moment through the independent uh, badger trials, 50 million pounds of our money spent, 11,000 badgers killed, dictate that in the vast majority of instances, culling badgers leads to an increase in the transmission of BTB via badger. So the science which dictates my position, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be governed by my head, not my heart in this way, is that it's, it's poor practice, it's not going to work. Same species. It's disgusting. There's, there's nothing other to say than, it, than it's out of date, um, it's irresponsible, and it's immoral. Uh, we have closed seasons which have been decided, you know, over a long period of time for, for very many species. And the species, uh, the, you know, the closed seasons are normally governed around the animals needing to find security and positions to mate, and then successfully rear their young. So presumably, some of those closed seasons were generated by the shooting hunting fraternity, so that they could sustainably exploit the resource and they wouldn't exterminate them. But on top of that, we have the morality issue. And what we know when it comes to shooting and, and hunting hares, there is a, a morality issue involved, because they're still, um, they're still coursing illegally, dogs chasing hares and killing them. Uh, we know that in some areas, hares are completely absent. They still organize huge hare shoots, where they exterminate them from entire regions. And, and, you know, and just like every other species in the UK countryside, the reason hares are there are to do a job, and it's a valuable job, and therefore we need them in, in, our, in, in our rural communities as part of that, to, to keep it sustainable, keep it healthy. And, and yes, this is an embarrassment for the UK, and it's particularly embarrassing when it encourages people to come to this country to basically pursue something which is amoral. And, and, and it should be changed. Uh, I wish you the greatest success with that, and I would fully support that, and I'm sure most people would. It, it's, it's outrageous, absolutely outrageous. It's very important, because I think ecotourism is a very valuable way of conserving certain species, and it's a great way of encouraging people to develop a greater affinity for many other species, because it allows them to engage with them. And that engagement is first-hand. It's not through the media of a television screen, a book, or the internet. And there's no doubt that seeing animals in the flesh um, is far more rewarding than any of those other you know, ways of, of, of trying to engage with them. I often say, you know, I'd rather spend 10 minutes with a woodlouse in the palm of my hand than watching a tiger on television. So yes, I want people to engage with those animals, but of course, at the same time, we've learned that they can, if it's not governed properly, have a, a significant negative impact, which is entirely, therefore, counterproductive. So I think this is a, a, an absolutely brilliant idea. If people can log onto your site and make decisions before they book up, before they travel, to make sure that they're going to places where the ecotourism has been well developed, is properly monitored in terms of any potential disturbance to the animal, uh, but also to make sure that that ecotourism is rewarded the communities where it's based. What's your thoughts on, on these Burn continual it. Burn it things? Off. Drag it out of the warehouses, as Kenya did, under Leaky, and burn the whole lot of it. Destroy the trade. You know, basically, if you're selling the stockpile, you're maintaining a market. And ultimately, the stockpile will run out. It will push the prices up in the meantime, which will increase the pressure through poaching on the animals that remain. The only way forward with all of these rhino, all of this um, elephant ivory, is to immediately destroy it and burn it. And then stamp this trade out forever. My goodness me, here, here we've got an animal which has got 19 populations, 17 in decline. We know that its habitat is going to be rapidly eroding through climate change, and yet for perverse reasons we're still allowed to, 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 you know, to... You and I can go to these places and we can buy skins, skulls, teeth and everything else. We can pay to get it, in fact. Pay to kill it and bring it into this country. Which this, is... I mean, I can't even... Ridiculous. It's inconceivable. For a rug or a decoration. It's just inconceivable. I mean, but we, the UK, an allegedly conservation aware, responsible, animal-loving nation in the 21st century is, is perpetrating this on the world's largest land carnivore, which is in rapid decline. It's, it's, it's beyond embarrassing.